His impending November date with the ICC is the reason for this emergency African Union summit. But as the heads of state got down to business, it was clear from the beginning that the tone had somewhat changed. It should be underscored that our goal is not and should not be a crusade against ICC, but a solemn call for the organization to take Africa's concerns seriously. Among those concerns is that the Hague-based court is only targeting Africans, perhaps best explained by the fact that all the eight cases before the ICC are on Africa. And Kenya, which had requested the meeting, was hoping to garner support for a process it has already begun at home, that of severing ties with the ICC. But as the AU Executive Council banned the midnight oil on Friday, it was clear that this was not to be, with strong divisions between Anglophone and Francophone countries over the issue, Kenya seemingly taking it in stride. There is no time at all that we have said that we want to move out of the ICC. So still CCTV among the major concerns for the dissenting voices were their strong relations with the West, to date Africa's biggest development partner. Many view their membership of the ICC as proof enough of their pledge to fight impunity. They also expressed concern at the slow pace by the AU in resolving conflicts on the continent. These countries included Burkina Faso, Senegal, Gambia, Mali and the Ivory Coast, whose former leader is already at the ICC. They argued that the AU should pursue their concerns with the UN Security Council and the state parties to the Rome Statute Forum next month. Strong supporters for an immediate declaration of a withdrawal were Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Sudan, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Ghana, Malawi, Tanzania and Algeria. Most of us here are looking for respect for Africa. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is said to have called each of the presidents at the meeting to persuade them against a withdrawal, promising to use his position at the state parties forum to address the concerns raised. Members were however unanimous in agreeing that the ICC should not prosecute sitting presidents. Now the summit comes a month to the start of President Kenyatta's trial and while the outcome of the summit serves as a temporary reprieve for the ICC, the court still finds itself in the grip of credibility concerns and some experts say the summit has laid the ground for what may turn out to be Africa's frosty relations with the ICC. Jane Keo, CCTV, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia.